Hi everybody, welcome back to the Dahlia Society. My name's Kristen, today I have a special treat, the brand new pattern release that was just released last week and I've made two versions especially for you. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you did that. Just don't forget to click the little notification bell as well so that way you'll be alerted to when a new episode is released and that's usually once to twice a week. So today I have a special treat as I mentioned, I've got two versions of the new Deer and Doe Passy Floor Dress. Deer and Doe, you probably already know, are a French-owned company run by women. Everything on their website you will see is named after either plants or flowers. Uh, this one in particular, the Passy Floor, is of course passion fruit. Um, there is a magnolia dress, which I've done an episode on previously. And if you haven't seen that, I will link that episode so you guys can catch up on that absolutely gorgeous dress uh, couldn't fault it I made two versions of that one as well and I have worn that quite a bit over the last 12 months myosotis dress so these are all named after plants um, and flowers usually and trees so I think that's a really lovely way to to name the patterns all of the patterns I find are that what I associate with them when I see anything from deer and doe would be a glamorous so they do have little features that um, stand out to me and there's always a little bit of a couture tailoring aspect to their garments when you when you sew them you will really learn a new technique every time you sew something from deer and doe so really well worth pushing yourself out of your limits sometimes to try some kind of different technique that you might not have tried before and that way i think we're always progressing and learning as sewers in the future when you stick to safe patterns all the time even though they're quick to sew they're very satisfying you can sort of throw them on after a day or so of sewing when you put your time and dedicate yourself to something that's very special or has a bit more tailoring you do have a lot of satisfaction and you Sometimes you surprise yourself with um, what you can get out of it. Now the passive floor dress comes in a size 34 to 52. I made the straight size 44 only because I knew from making the uh, Magnolia dress I was a 44 to 46. I, I made a 12 of that one. This one I didn't bother because I actually had a really large piece of fabric in my stash that I would bought about 12 months ago. bought this from Spotlight on a clearance table for about $8 a metre and it's just a polyester uh, lovely teal with a big... Um, rose and black colored print it really stood out to me because i loved the the print and the color mainly and of course when you see the fabric that is that cheap you usually are best to grab at least four to five meters because these are the type of dresses that you need a lot of fabric for now, it is a very fabric hungry pattern especially the version a which i made i did it with the long sleeve this was kind of a wearable twill because I knew I wanted to use up this fabric I'd had in my stash. I didn't bother putting the cuffs on the sleeves or anything like that. I just wanted to get the dress made up to see as it was to make kind of a wearable twill that way before I made the next version, which would be the version B. The thing that I love about this dress in particular is it has that really lovely vintage 1940s style double breasted um, button front, but has good coverage. So not like your normal wrap dress that you have to worry about um, being exposed or sort of falling in and out or wrapping things around. You've got that nice button on each side. So you, you use about eight buttons, um, four of which are sort of faux buttons on the front and the other four which are actually buttoned up and you have one internal button on the inside just to keep everything together so you do actually feel very well put together I love the lapel shaping on these as well, the way it crosses over. And I really like the nice sort of fitted shoulders. I think what would look great with this, if you wanted to add more of a tailoring aspect to it, you could quite easily put some shoulder pads in there, some little lightweight shoulder pads that will give us uh, give it a lot of uh, structure that way. Um, but you feel very statuesque in this, very empowered. It's a kind of dress that I think you could really dress up um, for the evening or dress it down depending on what you're wearing with your footwear and you know if you're wanting to use the short sleeves as well I think that kind of gives a more of a summery almost that safari suit looking um, style so I really love that and I think it works well on so many different fabrics. So yeah this version I made version A with a long sleeve took about 4.2 meters of a 150 width so quite a lot of fabric so it's not for the faint-hearted. There are a lot of aspects to this uh, pattern which might um, scare off a beginner sewer. So I would probably tackle this if you're more of an intermediate and you want a bit more of a challenge, even more into the advanced. So I really think it is worth trying this pattern if you are quite a capable sewer that's more into that intermediate uh, field and that you do want to challenge yourself. Definitely give it a try because the pattern itself has fantastic instructions. When you first print the PDF pattern out, it is a massive pattern. There are so many pieces to this pattern. So always check your guide that shows you all your pattern pieces you should have, your pattern layout, where your fabric, where you, where you need to place your pattern pieces. Don't forget to look at that because you will miss parts. There are so many pieces to this, especially when you're making the jacket style with the cuffs as well. So you've got little belt loop pieces, little um, 
you know, cuff pieces, things that you could easily miss. Another thing it requires you to do too is to put uh, sort of self-draft your interfacing pieces and it shows you exactly how to do that. So you make a little rough sketch um, and it, it'll show you on the pattern piece where you need to put your interfacing, so for your under collar and things like that. So it's really quite easy to do because you will read the instructions and it's, uh, as I say, it holds your hand right the way through the pattern. So I'll show you a little bit of video footage of me in the first dress, so the view A. I've made it, as I say, a polyester blend. so many varieties of fabrics it does say to use in particular uh, the drapier style fabrics things like your tent cells your rayons your um, cotton lawns one thing i must say with the poly because you cannot press it quite as easy as you could say with a linen or a cotton is that when you're doing making things like collars and lapels if you can't press the fabric you're never going to get that nice structured look to it so i would probably lean away from these light polyester um, fabrics and go more into something with a little bit more structure and body um, and in the next few I've made I've made it in a tensile and especially when you are ironing on your fusible interfacing you, it doesn't always press very well to polyester so that's another thing you might find it peeling away and because you've got so many buttons and buttonholes you need to put quite a lot of interfacing in between those so it, if it doesn't stick well it'll become quite a messy kind of a sew. My suggestion would be if you're making this specifically in a round which I think the round is one of the first suggestions they make if you're you're picking out a print fabric you're going to be able to disguise a lot more of that kind of thing with a drapier light print in a, in a print rather than a solid color and i think the long dress in the version a really would lend itself nicely to a rayon the other unusual thing with this pattern that i was quite surprised was that the actual bottom part of the skirt the panel of the skirt is a different panel altogether so you need to attach that sort of separately normally with a long maxi dress if it's a wraparound dress you'll just do that all in one piece but because it's quite a different style the structure of the dress really makes you have to have that bottom layer separately and sew it on separately but I was quite concerned about that and I nearly didn't look at the pattern. I nearly actually lengthened the, the whole top to make it the length of the dress but I thought no there's a reason for this and there really was because you need to see that the way it falls and the structure of the dress needs to have that separate bottom panel. Personally I think it works really well but I think because it's in a drapier lighter fabric it maybe doesn't sit as well as nice as structured as it would if you had a say a rayon or a cotton blend. So sorry if I sound a bit confusing but personally for me after making the two I think I would always tend to go more of a structured blend fabric than a softer um, blend. Other than that, rayon's probably the softest I would go. So I'll put some video footage of version B, which is in a rayon tensile in a lovely dusky pink colour. I made that with the, the little cuffs at the bottom and the buttons and I put a D-ring belt on that as well. Make sure when you're putting your interfacing on your belt, you use a bit of a thicker interfacing so it gives the belt a bit more body and structure, especially when you've got the, you don't want it to be too stiff with the D-ring, but you want it to have a little bit more stability than just having a really soft uh, interfacing. If you're wanting to use just the good old fashioned belt buckle style, you can quite easily just buy the little belt buckles themselves and you know join it to your, your fabric belt. I think that always looks really nice. You can just use a belt that you may have in the wardrobe just to give you that nice sort of pulled in effect i think it gives you that lovely shape when you wear a belt with this particular style the inside of the jacket with your facings does require to, uh, quite a bit of hand stitching so if you don't enjoy hand stitching probably wouldn't be best to look at this pattern at all i think there's a bit of stitching in the ditch in one of the versions but most of it will require some hand stitching but one thing i find that always helps me is that i have got a little tub of beeswax um i think it's the merchant mills beeswax i run my thread through the beeswax before I start stitching and that really helps give your thread that nice bit of stability and stops it getting tangled into a mess so I think it's well worth investing in some some beeswax and some good hand sewing needles as well. I would definitely love to make this uh, in particular in the jacket style version in a linen. I think a linen would work beautifully. Um, you do as I say you need about nine buttons so I, I think they are five eighths of an inch um, size buttons. Uh, I thought they were a bit small but once I saw them on the dress I think they worked really well actually because I think the dress itself 
does all the talking so the buttons should be just sort of become part of the dress and not vice versa I think that will stand out too much if they're too big I think this pattern would work really well for a larger busted ladies I think they actually give you quite a lot of room you've got your princess seams down the front which give you that beautiful shape but yeah plenty of room in this for it's me quite a good size range in this pattern too so I think it's um something that you will all love to try being the kind of thing you can adapt to all different seasons I think works really well uh, I just think making the jacket itself would be fantastic to wear over jeans in winter because it's a great lightweight style jacket I think the pattern it's is great value because you're getting four versions of the one pattern so you can do different sleeve lengths different um different that'd be the mid thigh length dress long dress or the top itself is really pretty as well um, I think there's quite a lot of options for you to play with there but definitely look into your sizing if you're unsure of the sizing maybe make a 12 first just to to make sure you get that fit right before you invest a lot of time into this pattern because as I say it is not for the faint-hearted I think it's something to definitely think about trying to to challenge yourself and I am really happy with the, the look of this I think it's turned out exactly how I envisaged um, that it would and it's a beautiful, classic, timeless style dress or jacket that you will find yourself reaching for again and again. So definitely look into it, but really take your time with it. Don't rush. Um, make sure that you have all your supplies ready. If you rush this pattern, you will regret it because, as I said, there's so many steps and so much involved in it. You don't want to be putting too much time and energy into something to be just sort of getting frustrated with it and leaving it. So definitely small steps. Take your time and you'll get through the pattern. You will love it just as much as I do. I'd love to hear what you think about this dress, whether you have any comments yourself, whether you've made it, what you've thought about it. Anything I haven't covered yet, please ask me in the comments below because I will quite happily answer that. Um, I was looking for a sew along and there, there isn't one as yet um, up, but I'm sure there will be in the future. Um, I personally find it a bit hard at the moment to do sew alongs because I have got five of my grown up kids all at home doing school and uni. It is impossible to do any kind of sew along. I know a lot of you have requested I do sew alongs, but until school goes back, until um, everything has gone back to normal, which fingers crossed it will eventually, um, yeah, it's a bit impossible to do that at the moment. So hopefully. I have inspired you to make one of these passiflor or passion fruit <laughs> dresses and that you have enjoyed this vlog today and if you have please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'll be back very shortly for a new little uh, weekly gather chat and to let you know what I have been working on recently so thank you so much for watching and bye for now